Hi there, guys. My name is uh, Kemlin Barlow. I'm an environmental consultant for BMT based in Aberdeen. And today I will be presenting the Marine Spatial Planning Tool for Digital Environmental Impact Assessment, a case study application for the Scottish salmon aquaculture industry. The original presenter, unfortunately, cannot be here today. His name was Harrison Carmody. He's uh, currently stuck in Australia, so I am taking over for him. So, this tool is has been developed to help marine spatial planning of aquaculture sites by using a, a six-step framework, which I will be going through. The Scottish aquaculture... Um, there are plans to double Scottish aquaculture production by 2030. To do this, good planning and assessment is essential. The National Marine Plan for Scotland has a set of objectives. The number one objective for aquaculture is to de develop an aquaculture industry that is sustainable, diverse, competitive, economically viable, and contributes to food security whilst minimizing environmental impact. I've included this uh, schematic here, a map of the west coast of Scotland, to show you some marine spatial planning that is already done of um, conservation areas on the west coast of Scotland, along with um, aquaculture sites that have already been put in place. As you can see here, there are quite a few uh, conservation areas. These conservation areas will have like, very specific marine features that need to be protected. So therefore, when you are thinking about developing an aquaculture site or a zone, you must really kind of think about these things. But these aren't the only things that you need to think about when it comes to marine spatial planning. There will be other stakeholders within the marine environment. So, what are the pressures and risks to environment from aquaculture? You can have uh, organic waste, which will smother the benthic environment, uh, which can also change the sediment chemistry. We can also get dissolved nutrients, which can lead to algal blooms, and eventually have O2 depletion, which can result in fish kills. There are also farm chemicals which are released into the environment. And as well as this, we have pathogens and parasites, including our good friends, the sea lice, which we're all here today to learn about. So, marine spatial planning is therefore required. To do this, you need to have zoning and site selection to look at the... And you also need to understand the cumulative impacts from several interrelated factors. From this, we can learn how to select the most optimal site when considering all these factors. So therefore, we can look at the ecological carrying capacity of the marine environment which the aquaculture site will be placed to have optimal fish stock. To do this, we have an integrated model that allows us to assess a whole range of different factors, such as those identified on the previous slide. This holistic approach is vital when selecting sites that are optimal for aquaculture production, while ensuring they will not suffer significantly from environmental factors such as sea life or impact heavily on the environment itself. Within our integrated model, we have a sea life model. This allows for the behavioral characteristics and physical influences that affect the dispersal of sea life to be included in the model. This includes the currents that disperse the sea life, the life stages of the sea life exhibiting different uh, characteristics, uh, changes in temperature and how that can affect the sea life, uh, dial ver vertical migration, so when the sun comes up, sea life go down, sun goes down, sea life go up, and natural mortality as well as, well as changes to salinity. We can also look at the site connectivity. So this can be connectivity between bath treatments, so sites that are close together can have uh, their bath treatments can all have a cumulative effect, so we can kind of look at uh, what is the best way to use that. Also look at the connectivity of sea life, as well as the, uh, if there are any sort of connectivity, organic and inorganic particles. So therefore, when selecting sites, we must consider the connectivity of proposed and current sites to make a holistic ecosystem-based uh, assessment. So, what were our objectives? Our objectives were to develop a framework based on the hydrodynamic model, which we use to flow FV. As well as this, we integrated in a particle tracking model under two flow particle tracking model, PTM, and a water quality and sediment diagenesis and parasite model, two flow WQM. Oh, 
Here we go. We've done this. Uh, we're going to employ the framework to estimate the sea lice dispersion, the sea lice footprint, such as the area density, as well as other factors which influence site selection. By doing this, uh, under a broad range of hydrodynamic and water quality regimes, we can facilitate optimal zoning and site selection. Now, I'm going to now go through the six steps which we have employed for the framework. This has aided us in developing the six state analysis framework for the marine space planning tool. The first one is that we need to look at a high level, uh, identify at a high level potential zones or sites that can be used for aquaculture production. So, as you can see here, we would use a traffic light system. This is a mock traffic light system that we've developed. Uh, you can see out of all these ones, most of these sites would probably not be suitable for an aquaculture site to be included. But in this mock scenario, we, have, uh, we would choose zone two as the water temperature is, would be suitable, current speed suitable, commercial fishing usage around the area, another stakeholder is very low, and sewage inputs are low. Once we have this, we can then use a 3D hydrodynamic model under two-flow FV on a flexible mesh to resolve the current speed, direction, temperature, salinity, the waves, and the bathymetry of the area. As you can see here, this is our flexible mesh, which we have developed of the Scottish West Coast, and that is demonstrating the uh, bathymetry of the area. And here you can see there's an image of current velocities which we have modelled under, well, that's a specific time step of the current velocities. Within this, we can begin looking at specific issues used in deciding where to select aquaculture zones and specific sites. Our first example, which we would look at, is in supporting site selection, which uses a waste particle tracking model and water quality simulations. We can track these particles from the pen to the seabed and observe the density of waste and the organic matter and the concentration, as well as the maximum extent of waste dispersion. So as you can see here, we have waste deposition rate, and the farm would be there, and you can see that it is dispersing out. As well as this, we can simulate the water quality and sediment diagenesis using a two-flow water quality model. From this, we're able to measure the following. A dissolved oxygen, inorganic nutrients, such as inorganic nitrogen, um, dissolved inorganic nitrogen, sorry, and inorganic phosphorus. Organic matter, such as from organic carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Um, chlorophyll and algal blooms, as well as sediment fluxes. So here you can see the dissolved inorganic nitrogen differences of the same modelled farm with different quantities of fish stock. Here you have the baseline, and you can see that the dissolved organic nitrogen, when it comes to 5,000 tonnes on the west side of this island, seems to concentrate quite a lot in that particular area. These ones, not so much, so this can aid in planning the, for aquaculture sites. As well as this, uh, we can support site selection using benthic impact mapping. Based on hydraulics, the fish waste and water quality modelling outcomes, we can assess the following. We can assess the waste deposition rates, the sediment oxygen demand, the sediment nutrient fluxes, the benthic in fauna diverse, uh, biodiversity, and recovery times. From this, we can try and place sites away from benthic habitats at risk of degradation or protected areas, or even priority marine features. We can also support site selection using a simulation of sea lice larval dispersal. Using the sea lice particle tracking model, which includes also the behavioral characteristics of the sea lice, we can assess different modeling scenarios, including comparing, uh, comparing contemporary and future farm management practices, comparing and combining different treatments of sea lice, looking at different treatment scenarios to compare them in terms of treatment dispersion and look for sites with high connectivity in sea lice. You can also look for areas where bath treatments across sites may have unforeseen cumulative impacts.
So finally, we can finalize site selection based upon the hydrodynamics, the deposition and dispersal, uh, dispersion of particulate organic matter, the advection of the, and dispersion of dissolved organic matter, mortality and dispersion of sea life, and the effects of these waste and sea life on pelagic water quality and benthic habitats and the rate of environmental recovery. So in summary, we can use all the information collected and modeled to optimize where sites should be placed so that sea life infestation risk between sites is minimized while incorporating other selection criteria which are also essential, allowing identification of cumulative impacts of all potential factors and impact. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Cheers. <laughs>